I mean, how do you how do you come up with a design concept for a yeah, I think for a brand that's so you know the heritage of it? Yeah, I think it's it's important that you know you you understand the brand, and let's let's not get this wrong. I'm putting my influence onto Aston Martin, but they're not Marek Reichmann's. They're my interpretation of what I believe the next generation of Aston Martin should be. And that's the role, really. And you become, if you like, a, um, an ambassador for the brand in terms of what you believe its design and its product, which is what the brand stands for, should be. So you have an open brief, yes, but you have the heritage, the culture, the history, what we call power, beauty and soul, all to think about as well, because it's still got to have the right feeling. Um, and, and an Aston Martin must have a certain feeling. So it, in many ways you have a constraint, but I think most design or designers like to work within constraints also because that challenges you far more. It makes you push and look and search. And so, yeah, throughout that time as a concept, so the four-door was, was very open, it still had to be an Aston Martin. In that time we've done um, a 177, so the most expensive Aston Martin ever, and we made only 77 of them. That's never been done before. Um, we we were the ones responsible and created a, a V12 Vantage Zagato, working with Zagato, but it was designed in Aston Martin rather than out in Italy with Zagato. So we were actually the generators of the idea. So that's very very different. We've done two very very special cars called CC100, which were to celebrate 100 years. We designed them and created them within six months. And they're very unusual and very different. There are only two of them. But the brief was wide open again. But when you see them, you understand they're Aston Martins. So. And for you, what's the, what, what is your favorite part of the evolution of that design? Where, 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 where do, where, I mean, it's exciting all the way through. But for yeah. you, yeah. what's the? I, th I think this, this, this may, the, the sketching part, the actually generating the idea, is all formulated in your head and the, the drawing, the sketching is you showing your idea or figuring out your idea because your, your brain can cope and see the shape and see the object but you have to put it down on paper to understand it more and think about it and analyse it. So I, I love that part of it, I love sketching and it comes so naturally but I think the most amazing part is it's not, it's not even the clay when it's finished, it's not even the sculpture when it's finished, it's the car when it first moves. It has power and it moves. Because in your mind you see these objects moving, they're dynamic things. And it's like any, I suppose, any sculpture, if it's not performing kinetically, if it's not doing what it should do, then, then you haven't finished. And when it first moves, and obviously we have brilliant sound as well, that's the bit where the hairs go up on the back of your neck and say, wow, and that started from the sketch. And, and because we are so close to the original sketch with our cars, it, it, it's, it's the piece of paper and the drawing coming to life. So I think it's, it's when it first moves. Yeah. So seeing the chassis yesterday, which is quite exciting for me to yeah. see it, you know, and it's admittedly probably a bit more polished up than yeah. <laughs> it's usual, but, um, that that I and mean, that's quite radical. I mean, putting your foot the gearbox at the back yeah. and so on. Um, did you did you did, how, how does that come about? I mean, why, that, why in this particular? Yeah, that's that's a really 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 interesting because again, design within Aston Martin and engineering have to work together. You know, they are inextricably linked because proportion gives us the beauty of the cars. So we have to think about a the driving dynamic and be the beauty of that driving dynamic and how do we get this beautiful object to drive incredibly well. And that is balance again. So it's a balance of design and engineering, but it's also balance literally in weight. And that layout, that transaxle layout with an engine at the front, a torque tube and a gearbox at the back with its diff and its subframe gives us more or less 50-50 weight distribution, which for a sports car is exactly what you want. It also gives design the ability to position the man if you like in that package where you where you want them so that you can get the roof low you can get a long elegant bonnet so it, it, it's adding to design and the aesthetic but it's also adding to the dynamic so the first if you like application of an eight speed in a transaxle layout is is so important to us because it gives us a dynamic but it gives us a really beautiful looking car as well
And is that, I mean, you know, in, in terms of what designers, what, um, you know, they're, they're looking for that ultimate tourbillon, aren't they? I mean, what, what's the ultimate that you're looking for and what, what will we see in the future? I mean, we're, you know, just off the chart, where, where are we going with that? Yeah, I think we are looking for the ultimate tourbillon. Yeah, absolutely, you, you are right. And that, that is through proportion. It is through a dynamic visual, you know, and it's something which is, but it's also timeless. It's also something which is, uh, for an Aston Martin again, it's not about fashion, it's very much about style and it's generating something which continues to be exciting. And everyone says, how can you do the next one? 177 was so beautiful, Vanquish is so beautiful. How are you gonna do the next one? But you have to combine technology, package, proportion, layout, um, materials to combine and do the next great product as well. So we will see much more the application of technology into the product much more, if you like, innovative use of materials, and they are innovative now, bonded aluminiums and carbons, but we'll start to see rarer materials coming into the cars. But it's combining all of that with a human touch, with natural materials, materials that are created from and by craftsmen and women within the factory, because that's important to us as well. It must, it must appear human. Our cars in many ways are analog, but in the future you'll see a lot more digital if you like, um, a revolution of the, the digital world in terms of how the cars are produced and made and the technology that we show through the cars. So I think it's, it's important to say Aston Martins will always be beautiful. And you can, all, you can put that in context as well and combine technology and beauty together. Uh, and you know, it's clearly obvious that a car from the 50s is beautiful to us now, we'll see it but it looks like a car from the 50s. And, you know, the job within Aston Martin, within design and with all the product development team is to generate incredible cars that look beautiful tomorrow and 20 years into the future as well. Lovely, thank you. Right. Drivers, You're welcome. Will we ever have a driverless Aston Martin? I, I think, you know, I think the world of autonomous driving is, is always going to be there um, because it's sometimes why do you want to drive your Aston Martin? So if I'm sitting in a traffic jam on the M25, wouldn't it be better to just press button A and read the newspaper and get home and let it pick the quickest route home? So when I get home, just before I get home, the car says to me, you know, you've got 20 minutes, you can go for a drive. Oh, great, press button B and I'll go drive myself somewhere. So I think technology, it has to be part of who we are and what we are as a company.